The mind is its own world, capable of generating both heaven and hell. Since the dawn of the time, military force have recognized the value of the mind. Sun Tzu claimed in his masterpiece, The Art of War, that in order to win, leaders must change their opponent minds. In 18th century, von Clausewitz stated that victory consists in removing the enemy's will and will to fight. In 21st century, such subjects are taught in military colleges all around the world. My name is Mario Beckes, Guinness World Record holder, and my experience in intelligence goes 14 years plus in military security intelligence services and several years in diplomatic intelligence. And today we're going to talk about Zestetsung, psychological warfare by Stasi. And today we can see this application, that modus operandi, torturing your mind, not your body, but your mind, on social media. So let me do a dissectomy for you. Stasi was being formed in 1940s with a duration till 1990s, 1990 when East Germany was actually fall apart, Berlin Wall, and then suddenly we have the almost 50, 60,000 agents wandering around the globe and selling their knowledge. Needless to say that year after Stasi was being joined with Securitate defending Ceausescu, Nicola Ceausescu in Romania. Those two agencies, intelligence agencies, have almost 100,000 people who learn how to torture people's mind. And today, I want to share with you why the Zestetsung was being most effective method by the Stasi in East Germany to control population. And sometimes we can see and witness today on TVs and uh, media when somebody says, fall off the balcony, lost his mind, or she lost his, her mind. Ask yourself, how would you behave if you wake up in the morning every day, four o'clock, because your alarm goes off, and you know you should wake up seven o'clock in the morning? Or you come to the workplace, and you know that every day your book's been moved, your staff has been moved, your colleagues knows something about you, you know they're whispering, but you know why. Suddenly you have the police stopping you 50 times per day, the gently pushing against the wall, you know, something was wrong. We all know that understanding someone helps us to affect them on personal level. In my military training, we learned the concept of heart and intellect. After all, information is the power. This method is thus sensible and clear when we apply to complicated and continuing operation. As explained in part one, Zersetsung required a special intelligence infrastructure supported by the willing public. You can check the video here. It is impossible to achieve in a place where it doesn't really exist. But it worked because people were afraid and their brains had already been molded by the state. Germany is Germany done this very well. The Stasi protected the state from potential threats by attacking the brain area where revolutionary or hostile ideas arise. How effective were Stasi and Zersetsung? Zersetsung strategies performed an important control function. Repression was used to punish those who were involved in or suspected of engaging in activities that the Stasi did not approve of. The human cost of those operations is impossible to quantify. As a result of being targeted, many East German activists are still suffering from varying stress, persistent mental health issues, and on a personal level, the Stasi was startlingly effective. The military Stasi simply couldn't fathom how many activist organizations could flourish in the absence of leader and structures. The column is taken in formal hierarchies for organizational structure, and they would target those who talk the most or took on the most tasks. Failing to recognize that even if these individuals were turned off, the remainder of the group could continue to function, and that would not necessarily fall apart. Even if any informant successfully sabotaged group efforts, 
the group would rarely be completely demoralized, but would instead work even harder to attain its goals, acquiring and applying intelligence. Informants were utilized not just to sabotage group activities and carry out Zesetsu plans, but also to gather intelligence about individuals and groups. Now, pay attention to this one. The vast bulk of intelligence was used to assess relationship and activity, which resulted in extension of intelligence gathering to previously untargeted individuals or groups, as well as a foundation for organiz organizing Zesetsu operation. There's a huge amount of data Stasi was processing I was critical to justify its own existence, as well as the salary and expenses of officers and workers. In one moment, when the Stasi was told to stop working, it was uh, Christmas 1990, uh, so 1990, 1989, when the Berlin Wall fell down, Stasi has almost 100,000 employees. 100,000 employees for such a small state. It's enormous apparatus, salaries, equipment, you know, logistics. They need to justify this. The Stasi become even more dangerous to activists as a result of this. Now, the Stasi reliance on intelligence collecting and operation escalation increased the possibility of surveillance, Zesetsung and sabotage, as well as the associated human costs. Informants were regularly identified as a result of Lack of planning, lack of planning. Not because they're planning. They realize we need more informants. We don't know everything. We need informants here. We need informants there because we don't have informants in that place. The majority of informants, however, not discovered until after 1989, when the Stasi files were revealed. And that is where the danger starts. But let's go back to Z Setsung. How they manage it. Many people succumbed to Stasi and other security forces pressure, often due to mental health problems caused by that pressure or through a process known as an inner migration, which involved abandoning political and social beliefs and do what? Taking the part of least resistance and seizing oppositional activity. Now, there is a resistance to Zesetsu. On the other hand, was surprisingly common and activists discovered ways to keep healthy and active. The assistance of friends and other companions was critical. As in any, I just want to give an example, as in any situation, like in a war, enemy learn your tactics. No strategies, your tactics. And they adjust, they, they improvise, they become immune on what you're doing and actually start using against you. The most effective technique for opposing the Stasi was most likely a close group of individuals who, sh who shared their understanding. They shouted their understanding to each other all the time of the political uh, policing class. Activists can openly express their concerns, suspicious, and once with, and they want, yeah, of course they want, with such friends as well as a formulated ways for dealing with the pressure. This provided them confidence, of course, the confidence that if something went wrong, they could rely on and be reliant on their friends. They would be present if help or support was needed. They would discuss potential scenarios as a group, such as who would care for the children if they were arrested or even in prison, or who could provide a safe house if someone was being followed and needed a break. On the other hand, group solidarity was critical to survival and freedom to remain active. Those groups with close ties to others across the country encountered less pressure. Even when persecution occurred later, as it did in East Berlin, large solidarity movements and organized efforts to get attention produced immediate results. Those groups who were less well connected particularly those in small towns and rural areas where they may have been the only activists. They were easy picking for the stars, those ones. An entire portion of the country cleans of grassroots activism at the times. Surveillance and intervention were openly addressed in groups. The difficult part was not to become paranoid 
especially since there was a good chance that the group already had an informant present. No, to be naive or ignorant about the possibilities, but to find a middle ground of sensible measures that would, if necessary, help without bogging the group down in extensive security measures that would simply impede the group's work. In other hand, if a group identifies someone as a possible informant, they may have decided not to take any obvious first measures. Instead of propagating rumors, an early strategy would be to investigate whether suspicions were valid. So there was opposition continuously. The traditional technique would be for a few trusted individuals to undertake covert research on the suspect. So we cannot do, ignore the fact that groups and individuals fought Stasi and Zersetsung. How the Stasi will do background checks? Do you have any relatives? Are they genuine? Has anyone else in the group been in touch with them? What about friendship formed outside the group? Did the suspect actually work where they claimed? Do they know the town where they claim to have grown up? So. This is the questions. To put it another way, when the organization felt they had discovered informant, they needed, they needed to be extremely cautious since it was all too easy to launch a witch hunt against innocent people. And that can paralyze group individuals and playing right into the hands of the Stasi. Now, when you have the civilians who start doing counterintelligence work, this is where the organized structures as a Stasi, maybe CIA, FBI, whatever you want to call, they adapting, adjusting their methods and methodologies, which not often government agencies can understand. I can, they cannot even decipher what they're doing. But people in East Germany, they knew it, how to ask these questions if the possible informant has been discovered. When we analyze the methodology used by the Stasi, is easy to become lost in. And the more you learn about, the more terrible it gets. As I indicated at the beginning of this section, the mind is capable of creating its own reality. It's capable of creating a heaven of hell and a hell of heaven. And Stasi, through their method, Zersetsung, done exactly that. They will use your mind, people's mind, to create the hell without even touching them. Can you relate this to the social media today? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.